Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Uti Elu and on this special holiday episode, I'm joined by one amazing co-anchor. Yeah, that's how we're doing it these days. The amazing Sanzi. No, let me call you Sandra Eze because when I don't call you, they said Sandra the other day and I was like, huh, who's that? So, Are you serious? Sanzi, folks. Yes. Uh, Hello, Sanzi, lady. yes, on the full name. Yeah. Sandra I tried, now I remembered. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Bravo. Hi, Hello, lady. Uh, yeah. First How time on set in years. In a while, yes. Uh, a bit of traveling, yes. back and forth. Yes. But um, life has been good. I mean, end of the year, December, I'm just grateful. Like, thank you, Lord. It's been we quite made an event. It. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's been <laughs> that kind of year. Yeah, I, I mean, know. Incredibly like, thankful to be yeah. alive. And I think I saw a meme. In fact, it was my boss that sent it to me. Oh. says, we don't need to, you know, finish strong. Let's just finish. <laughs> like 2023? Yeah, let's just get to January 1st, like 2024. Nigerians kind of have that vibe. It's just, it's okay. Just, even if you're crawling, just cross the line. Yep, it's okay. yep. You don't have to race through it. Mm. <laughs> well, it's yeah. certainly great to have you back on set. It's great to have you back in Lagos. I know. I love it. Like, Officially back in Lagos, we're <laughs> moving back and forth. Yeah, so. She yanked the carpet out from underneath us and said she was going to Abuja. Oh, no. But you know, God <laughs> is a powerful. <laughs> Are you guys praying? It's me back? All powerful. <laughs> mm. So he back heard our back. prayers and uh, yes, so it's great to have you back. Yeah, thank you. So let's get into this show. Here's what we found as today's quote: "You cannot leave Africa," Africa said. "It is always with you, there inside your head." Our rivers run in currents in the swirl of your thumbprints, our drum beats counting out your pulse, and our coastline the silhouette of your soul. Bridget Dore, whoever you are, you're a very wise woman. Totally, totally agree. I completely agree. It's like you can never take home out of you. Africa strong, not, Africa not pride. The mannerisms, the love for drums. It's like it, the easiest way to tell an African that's outside of the immediate African continent mm -hmm. is when you hear the sound of drums, somehow they're moving their leg or mm. the head. Or it's just something that says yeah. an African just gives you away. It's, it's very powerful, I mm -hmm. think. And we're also unique. And I guess the world is full yeah. of diversity, but we're, we're uniquely so even more, I think, in Africa. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a thread that runs through other continents where they're, you know, but here we can be totally different. And I'm not even talking continent. I'm talking like within Nigeria. <laughs> like tribes are like chalk and cheese. I know people will say, no, we were never one country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that conversation today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is, you know, very, very powerful uh, to be African. And it, it goes right down to our DNA, our culture, our history, the very essence of who we are. But to the topic of today, December is here again. And this is the time of travels for Africans across the world. As long as you can afford to travel, to be with families this period. The holiday season is already absolutely in full bloom in Nigeria. Decorations have popped up. Work has started to wind down and different forms of festivities have been lined up for the rest of the month. Today we'll be discussing the influence of Dirty December, yes, on Africans. <laughs> in the diaspora space with Abigail Opia, but watching ways. So thanks for staying with us. As I said, we were discussing, or we are discussing um, Dirty December, the origins of Dirty December, the festive period in Nigeria, marked by extravagant celebrations and partying remain a point of debate. While some attribute its rise to the record-breaking December celebrations in Lagos in 2019, Others trace its roots back to the Calabar Carnival's inauguration in 2004. Adding fuel to the fire, musician Mr. Easy claimed to have invented the term in a 2022 interview, pointing to his 2016 song, Dirty Asef, as evidence. Regardless of its precise origin, Dirty December has become a deeply ingrained cultural phenomenon in Nigeria and beyond. So today we are asking, what is the influence of Dirty December on Africans in the diaspora? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. How are you dating the December? Uh, um, 
I'm working <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, is that your variant of Dirty December? Just you know, my own version of. I mean, uh, for working. me personally, I just want to play it safe because the last time we were so loud about Dirty December, 2020 gave us COVID. And uh, it was because people had spent vivaciously PTSD. just <laughs> in 2019, <laughs> and then COVID is like, hello. And then uh, it, you know what happened uh, during COVID. So, um, Dirty December, I'm not that much into it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to miss traveling home because I'm mm -hmm. always going home every single Christmas. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's like a habit, mm -hmm. it's a routine. But this year, I'm not traveling. I'm going to be in town working all through. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my So we've swapped places. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, traveling. I'm traveling. I'm doing the whole East wow. kind of Christmas. Yeah, so Ooh. my okay. dirty December is taking also a different I mean, turn. But I'm open to events in Lagos. I would maybe try out one or two, even though I would rather just be home and watch Christmas movies. Yeah. So <laughs> that's eat. me, right? Yeah. Um, spending most of... Well, and technically now, it's not really more of my life in the UK than I did in Lagos, but enough of it yeah. where the Christmas sort of tradition that I identify with is a quiet Christmas, is being home with family, lots of food. Mm -hmm. um, so the context of Nigeria where... I mean, before we even talk about December, Christmas Day itself, like the entire UK shuts down. There's no public mm -hmm. transport. Like, if you don't have a car, you're not going away. I mean, taxis are extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. So the concept, when I got to Nigeria, people were like, ah, somebody's had three in a party on Christmas Day. Eh, why? <laughs> like, it's such, my brain can't really wrap itself around, like, I struggle. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I'm, home, if I'm in Lagos for Christmas, I'm always home on Christmas Day. Like, I don't, like, people... Why would I get out of my pajamas on Christmas Day? It doesn't make any sense to me. No. I mean, the only thing I used to do was like cook. You do a whole turkey and all of that. But in Nigeria, you just order food, plenty, and just put it on the dining table. Everybody dig in. <laughs> That's my own version of a Lagos Christmas. But so it, it, it's quite weird. But let's talk about you know the run up because I think in Nigeria, mm -hmm. I think Dirty December now has even sort of shifted into the later part of November. <laughs> The events, if you sort of are, are watching that trajectory and yeah. we have all these different entertainment calendars, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, people that are determined to help you plan yeah. your dirty December. And I think this year I didn't really get into it because mm -hmm. one of the events that for me um, kind of categorizes my dirty December is like there's a series of concerts, um, I think by Fly Time. And it's a store what he does every year. And it's always so good because they bring in like it's a wonderful mix of huge, you know, Nigerian artists. Yes, yeah. And then they bring in like maybe like an old school, like a boys to men or, you know, like a Neo, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think Neo this year, Neo was here. Idea. No, he was here. Oh, no, no, no. He was? He, yeah, Flight Time brought him 20, two years ago. Yeah, 2020, 2022. No, yeah, no, 2021, actually. So, yeah, see? See why you should be in Lagos? <laughs> uh -huh. um, but I think this year, the lineup just, I, 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 over the years, I think I've seen all the Nigerian artists that mm -hmm. he had. So it, it kind of put a dampener for me because that's the thing that really tells me December is like, is yeah, here. you know, and then you think about all the other events. Um, but it was sort of a, a twist to it. So I, because that happened, I didn't pay attention to all of the other big concerts. And I mm -hmm. don't think that we've had as much marketing like, really every because you typically in lagos everywhere is plastered like so yeah. now i think if you're not really going past certain parts of vi you don't really see the posters mm -hmm. i mean even some of the transverse buses are still carrying last december's posters, um, posters from like the whisked concert and things like that mm -hmm. so i think this year has been a little bit perhaps maybe the marketing spend is not as high um so it's been odd but then as we're getting closer also to the like the actual Christmas end yeah, of the month. Because. We're now seeing more events and like I started to see event calendars. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm seeing it feels like not as much is happening this December, I kid you not, there's like three to four events every single day. I'm not talking Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm talking mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wow. When I saw this particular calendar, I'm like, which Lagos are you people in? Because <laughs> clearly I'm in the wrong place. Um, but I'm looking forward to hearing what um, our guest has to say about the work that she's doing yeah. um, around the events and the happenings of Dirty December. So, Abigail Opia is a London-based journalist and documentary filmmaker with over seven years of experience freelancing as well as writing for tech publications in the UK, US and Canada. She's currently working on a documentary titled IJGB, Lagos in December, the dirtiest time of the year. 
which is set to highlight the best bits of Nigeria, her country of origin. Thank you for joining us, Abigail. Thank you so much. Honestly, I'm so grateful to be here. You ladies are so lovely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Perhaps you. you. Um, you're just as lovely yourself. Um, you know, for me, I love what you're doing. I'll start off by saying, I mean, I absolutely love Nigeria. Um, like you, you know, London girl, back here. <laughs> my entire family still in the UK. Thinks I'm nuts for being here, but hey, Lagos is home, um, and it's so special to me. And given the amount of negativity that is out there in the media, in the world in general, right, whatever medium it is about Nigeria, um, I'm always ecstatic to see somebody telling positive stories about Nigeria because we need them. We need to, mm -hmm. to, to sort of paint the right narratives for people to understand that. I think we've come away from... You know, those days when people thought, I mean, when I was at uni, someone asked me if we lived in houses, but you know, <laughs> we've come away from that. Um, but we're not still where we need to be, right, when it comes to telling the right stories about Africa and Nigeria mm -hmm. in particular. So tell us how this journey began. So obviously you're a journalist, um, but how did you zoom in on Dirty December? Very, really long story, but I'll keep it very brief. So in 2020, I came to Nigeria as an adult for the first time without my mm -hmm. parents. So it was like, <laughs> it was like free for all and I came in December. So we, um, me and my friends decided to do a live podcast just on a whim, cause we were just like, oh, it's post COVID. Let's elevate our platform. So we came here and it was just like, I, could, I was only here for seven days. I could you not know, only booked a seven day uh, flight and I was this close to changing my flights. So I was like, oh. there's no way that this is the Lagos that <laughs> my mom had told me about. Like I'd been with my mom in the past and it wasn't this vibe, it was just, mental and this was the covid that you were you were 2020 this was 2020 and i still had a vibe so i was like wow. there's no way i'm not going to come back when <laughs> lockdown and boris johnson and all the other people say we're allowed to come back so mm -hmm. i then came back officially in um 2022 no 2021 sorry and i did a debt of december but it was a brief one and then 2022 was literally my ultimate debt of december and the catalyst for me filming this documentary was because as I was posting, I was just posting like everything I was doing every day, but I did a straight month. So I, I was the people that came in November because I was like, I want to experience it from the start to the end. Mm -hmm. And I left in January and I did not, kid you not, did not have a day where I was in the apartment for more than 20 minutes. Are you serious? I promise you. Five hours sleep was the max I had <laughs> for a month. And I remember when I came back, I was really ill, but it was worth it. We were using bullet, the black bullet, mm -hmm. to, su to sustain us going mm -hmm. forward. And I just remember thinking, like, you know, this is absolutely fantastic. But it was when I got back to London and the feedback, like, people on Instagram were like, where are you? I was like, I'm in Lagos. Nobody could believe I was in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So that was quite disappointing, in my opinion, because I'm all for, like, you know, making sure that I I'm, I'm, number, I'm the number one Nigerian in my friendship group. I'm the number one Nigerian in London in general. No one can tell mm -hmm. me that I'm not Nigerian. And I've never once been um, embarrassed of it or I've never once been, because there's been a culture of like people, you know, trying to pretend like they're not because mm -hmm. of certain mm -hmm. stigmas and stuff. But when I came back and I saw the feedback from people saying to me, I can't believe this is Lagos. Oh, Lagos has, you know, uh, you can make your own perfume in Lagos. Oh, they have archery in Lagos. The fact that they were so shocked, I was like, there's no way that the world won't be able to know mm. that my country of origin has all mm -hmm. these amazing things, plus more. Mm. Because the culture is so much more, we're going to get into that, definitely. But just, just the vibe, the nightlife vibe of, like, we see it, I'll be on the table and there's Azul coming, pouring in, <laughs> and the neck, we're going to hot. My box. goodness, you had a lot of fun. <laughs> there's nothing I didn't do. Fly time, I did. Club, I, I cleared all the clubs. Wow. W bar, cleared. I cleared, there was nothing I cleared on the island. I even went to the mainland because I was like, okay, we've done the island. <laughs> That's the mainland. So, wow. Yeah, so the, the, it was quite disappointing that when I got back, um, so many people were so surprised and so shocked that this was Lagos, like mm -hmm. the luxury style of it. The apartments we stayed in was really, really beautiful, like most beautiful things I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, I have to do something about it. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to save up my money and I'm going to film a documentary. Oh, wow. So the world can know. Well done. And now you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, well. it's really great to hear. And like I said, we need those positive stories. It really mm -hmm. does hurt to experience it and then have people not believe that it is Lagos. We're still really fighting that sort of single story narrative about what people think um, Lagos is. But Sansi, yeah. you want to I, I mean, one of, like, my aunt wanted to come back this year. 
but she was so uh, worried about security. She's like, oh, I'm hearing all these things in the news about security and people could, you know, pick me up or just kidnap me or something. And I'm like, I mean, bad things happen in every country. There are bad reports. So you're here and uh, you're coming from the UK and stuff. So uh, were you not worried about security and, you know, stuff? Do you know what? I've, I've noticed the running theme of um, whenever you're traveling to Lagos, every time I've gone, so I mm -hmm. do two times a year, um, I have aunties telling me, ah, they're kidnapping people in this. Exactly, doing yeah. If I listened to them, I would have never come. And what I'm trying to do now is like last year I brought over um, a set of cousins that had never been to Nigeria before. Mm -hmm. This year I'm doing the same. So they're pulling up next week. And, but oh, wow, now look at you. Like my <laughs> baby sister who was... A, she wasn't really like a you know, Lagos girl. She was very British. Um, but she's so interested in coming now just because I'm, I'm using myself as a case study. If I can go there with my... Absolute British accent. I can't even do the Nigerian accent, sadly, or the pidgin English or stuff. And I've managed to go two times a year and never gotten kidnapped before. I mm. promise you, you're fine. Like, you're fine. Yeah. I mean, there's it's... certain roads that you, you know, you may have to like sit on your phone once in a while, but it's part of the experience. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Traffic, you know how to use your sense. And honestly, street the sense. <laughs> I, I wish people would stop putting fear into other people especially um, younger girls or younger guys in mm -hmm. the diaspora, I wish I would just stop putting fear into them about things like that, about safety. Because Nigeria, is, it happens everywhere, like you said, but Nigeria is actually pretty safe. I've been here since November. Have I been mm -hmm. kidnapped? No, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I love the fact that you talk about common sense because it's the same, right? You, you could get mugged walking down the street in the UK. You could get shot going shopping in America. Mm -hmm. So really and truly you're spot on like it makes no sense but these are the narratives that we have to fight this is why documentaries like yours that really spotlight the fact that look you're a young person and why your story is so powerful for me is you came here as an adult for the first time and you saw a completely different picture even from what you had experienced because you were seeing it through the eyes of your mom mm -hmm. and her experiences and the things that she would let you do but then the moment you had the opportunity to sort of build or craft your own journey it's like it opened up like a flower you're like ah um and and it's so great to hear that you're then sort of paying that you know forward and bringing more young people because mm -hmm. more people need to do that you know you see people particularly sort of like african-americans they're doing the journey back to africa but then in back nigeria, to motherland do you know that's the word but, <laughs> in, <laughs> like, but, but in nigeria the trajectory the other way everybody wants to japa <laughs> everybody wants to get out and i'm like look you people make it seem like this place is literally like you know hell on earth and it's not you know bad things happen i'm not saying that they don't i'm not saying that nigeria doesn't have issues but is it in truth really that bad and the fact is more people want to come home in December. Everybody wants to eat small chocolate. Everybody wants to eat suya. Everybody wants to, you know, you want, you know, you want to yeah. move. And I, I mean, the clubbing experience in, in Lagos, I always tell people, anywhere you go in the world, if you haven't mm -hmm. clubbed in Lagos, you haven't, you haven't started. Like, it's a completely different experience. We're not buying shots, we're buying bottles. <laughs> bottles. bottles. Um, so it's great to hear. So talk to us about your documentary, how... Um, Sort of what is that process like what is it are you interviewing people are you going to be sort of going to live events what's that all about yeah so originally we started off in june so i had this idea at, in february when i came back and did um, last year's death of december mm -hmm. and then i uh, called my cousin i was like listen i need to do something quickly i've saved up this uh, x amount of money and she was like just just come so i was like okay i booked my flight in june i'm i'm a journalist by nature anyway, so i know how to rally people and convince them to talk to me on camera mm -hmm. <laughs> so um i did like um I, I just found like the top stuff that i did last year reached out to people that own like beach houses i reached out to um, djs like so we had dj obi who's like doing mm -hmm. this whole obi's house, obi's house yeah We've had um, Elijah Poppin, who does like the mainland block party. We've had DJ Tobad, is killing it, doing stuff for like um, David Owen, all that good stuff. And then we've also had like just um, everyday people that are making it work. So we've had like people like um, this lady called Calypsi. She's a PR agency. We've had people like Titi uh, working at Empire, just making the music scene like rock and stuff and just mm -hmm. doing fantastic things. And then my main focus is, so because it's called IJGB, mm -hmm. we've got the IJGBs, which I've convinced to come to Nigeria. Oh, nice. So when they land on the 19th, we're now going to film everything. But after we've, we've spoken to all these people that are mm -hmm. making it happen, they're the ones putting it all together. And then when the IJGBs come, we're going to use their viewpoint to 
navigate Lagos. So mm -hmm. everywhere they come from, when they land, they film them from the airport, and then navigate every single you know buy every single concert, every single yes. beach house that they hit. Yeah. And we're gonna show just basically show Lagos as an amazing mm -hmm. place. So we've um, so we've got schedules. Interviews are almost finished. The last interview I'm doing um, is tomorrow at LAX because okay. it's nice to do like a homecoming stuff. And he mm -hmm. agreed to be on the documentary, which is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. But then after LAX, we're doing no more one-to-one um, -one interviews, and then we're going to go straight into B rolls. We're going to just film literally every as much as possible, mm -hmm. every single vibe that's happening within this period, and then we wrap filming up. The last film will be at Obi's house, obviously, just because he has like fireworks and all that yeah. stuff. Um, and then, yeah, and then, um, yeah, I'll come back, edit it, and show it to the world. But I think um, the journey has been definitely an interesting one because this mm -hmm. is my first time ever um, deciding to take a gamble. I feel like this is like my final gamble in my 20s. Mm -hmm. But just because it's for passion, my normal day job isn't about um, telling stories about Africa or anything like that. But I just feel like because I'm Nigerian and mm -hmm. This has been such so dear to my heart. I don't mind spending money into it because I know that yeah. I will definitely get a return in terms of how many people I bring back to the country because mm. this country does need tourism, I think. I think tourism I think. will definitely help. Yeah. If you're just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, Influence of Desi December, on Africans in the diaspora. Um, we're coming right back to the topic. So we stopped off just before we went on the break to talk about um, tourism. We just mentioned tourism. Mm -hmm. So did you want to ask a question? About yeah, that? I mean, I do appreciate the efforts you're making to paint a better picture because it's like when we in Nigeria try to tell people outside that, listen, Nigeria is a beautiful place. Uh, yes, the economy might not be so stable, but uh, there is so much you can earn from uh, tourism. And it's just, I just want to applaud you for doing that because, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. Being that you're sponsoring yourself, and this is a sacrifice, and you're not just bringing yourself, you're encouraging others, supporting them to come and see, like, this is the real Nigeria. And while we have the real Nigeria in Lagos, there is also the other part of Nigeria. There are people who probably can't uh, afford dirty December, you know. So, And I know you're viewing this documentary from the lenses of IJ, uh, I just, IGTV. <laughs> yeah. So do you plan to, like, also show um, the other side of... of uh, the other side of people who probably can't afford dirty December? Because I feel like it would be a nice coverage if you could show, like, the super cool side and also the other part of Nigeria? Honestly, no, I don't plan to okay. show that because when you Google, even if you go on YouTube and you just type in Nigerian documentary, mm -hmm. there are so many people showing, oh, poverty, oh, traffic, oh, government corruption. Mm -hmm. I don't want to include, include that. that. Okay. Like, like, it's, I feel like we've had enough stories like that mm -hmm. and now it hasn't worked. It's clearly doing us a disservice. So we need something else. We need to show other people that there is highlights to it. And, you know, I feel like the more people come in, the more the economy might get stable. In right. Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, <laughs> I, but I believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, but once the economy does get stable, it will benefit all the other people along the way. And I, I, speaking on that, I did have someone message me who had followed me from... Um, on Instagram, they were like trying to follow my work and where I'm going. And it broke my heart when he was like, you know, I've never seen Lagos like this. And I was just like, oh. I could you not? I'm sure you live in Lagos, right? And he said, yeah, yeah, but you're just showing me how you can enjoy Lagos when you have money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely broke my heart. But I use that as a tool because if we can get more people, more foreign currency, more, you know, just, just a stable economy in general. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think me telling the side of the story of, you know, not everybody can afford debt to December, everyone knows that. I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to benefit the story in any shape. Right, you already have the media houses doing that yeah, so well. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody, 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 everybody. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you're, you're really right. I mean, it, it, I get where Sansi is coming from in terms of saying, should we balance the equation? But you're actually the one who's trying to balance the equation mm -hmm. because right now there's all the negatives. So we're literally trying to tip the scale back to the side of the positive. And the reality of it is, I keep saying it, there's the uber super rich everywhere you go. And I mean, you're coming from the UK. Some people can't afford to heat their houses at the moment. It doesn't change the fact that some people still have tons and tons of money. So um, the, the bit for me, when you sort of talked about tourism, um, which I think is absolutely great, um, the entertainment sector is doing a lot for us because mm -hmm. that's essentially the side that you're now looking at and the more sort of artists and, and people in that space really just doing their thing is opening up opportunities and it's impacting the economy because, you know, if you have a, an event at certain hotels, everywhere, everything and everywhere is sold out. 
Um, so for me, I was just curious to say, oh, wow, have you thought about turning the tourism side of it into a business? Because if you bring this set, they have a great time, they're going to go back and tell another <laughs> set. So literally, it's like, um, what's that? What's the, 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 the railroad? You know, you're building a path back to Nigeria to have these amazing mm. experiences. So might that be a, 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 a nice side hustle that's going to come out <laughs> of business venture? You're the first person that's told me that, actually, to be fair. Um, I actually interviewed um, a lady called Hannah Ajala. She's a, she works for the BBC, and we filmed her in the Lekki Conservation Centre. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing shoot. Um, but sh what she does is she has this company where she brings diasporans to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just thought of it, because the amount of people that message me are like, I've got friends that are Jamaican that have no interest in Lagos. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're coming this December. Oh, wow. It's going to be nuts. Like, uh, <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> level of people that I'm bringing back is going to be nuts. But I think definitely there's a business aspect of that. But my main focus is just telling the, tell story. the story. So mm -hmm. I'm not trying to venture off, make more money. I'm not a greedy girl, you know? I just want to say I can partner with you and this should be my 2024. I know, because honestly, because I feel like she's having all the fun and I am here in Lagos and I just won't go out. I don't enjoy going out. Well, I've got an agenda. You can definitely pull up. Yeah, but in your uh, journey so far with the documentary and all the people you're meeting, what is your most shocking discovery? Like, I'm curious. Do you have, like, most shocking discovery so far in this documentary process? I think what has shocked me the most is the fact that despite um, the people I've spoken to and their level in the game of, mm -hmm. you know, making things happen and just their position and how they sit in the country versus people that are less fortunate, they still have so much negative things to say. And I'm having to, not like, I'm not, not lying, but I'm having to coach them that, you know, this is a positive documentary, but I feel like they need to... Maybe the, maybe the idea of you know saying all the good bits of Lagos in their mind is um, dishonest. Mm -hmm. But b you saying all the good things doesn't mean that you can omit the bad things and then it's a terrible thing. I just think for a certain project, you should. If we're talking about just the good things, let's just yeah. talk about the good things. It's like highlighting gratitude. Yeah, <laughs> but it just it just shows me that despite all the amazing stuff and you know all these people that are coming using their three thousand pound flights to come to Lagos. Um, for just a short period of time, there's, there's still a long way to go, and I'm not gonna, you know, you know, sugarcoat that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. It's. Um, I mean, I, I'm. I've been processing this business idea. <laughs> You are like, a business. You're focus, the wrong one. Like focus, 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 <laughs> focus on the conversation. Um, so let, what, let's talk about what post-production looks like and where we can expect to see the final edit of um, of, uh, of the documentary. So when I come back, we've got an editor in the UK that's going to work on this, scrubbing the sound, making it look vibrant, um, putting it all together. I can edit myself, but I refuse to do it because it's the biggest project I've ever put my hands on. So I'm not going to do it myself. Um, we've got meetings with Prime. Prime are the only ones interested at the moment, but the aim is Netflix because Netflix pays yeah. more. So, uh, <laughs> um, but I've actually teamed Such up. So, business woman. <laughs> <laughs> I've teamed up with a company called Winter Studio. So okay. they're the ones um, that are providing the camera equipment for this whole they've done it since June and yeah it's going to be amazing and um, they've been really really supportive in the sense of you know just whenever I'm ready to film I could like the LAX one tomorrow it was mm -hmm. just like a last minute thing but they're just like yeah we've got camera equipment for you mm -hmm. go and do your thing so it's nice to see that other people are on board but the aim is Netflix but right now we've got prime interested only Mm -hmm. Don't worry, they'll come along. Um, <laughs> yeah, if, if you build it, they will come. So, yeah. so I totally believe that. Um, the quote that we had on the show today spoke about Africa, so no, not just Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I mean, in Africa, Nigerians rock, <laughs> if I say so myself. Um, I don't think Nigerians are other, a list. I like yeah, so, so a list, I don't, that's I don't think it. That any other, <laughs> off the top of my head, I can't think of maybe South Africa, but even that. I don't think that there's any other African country off the top of my head that sort of parties and maybe dirty December. Um, well, Gambia's not Maybe bad. Ghana? Ghana? Well, a little I think, bit? I think Ghanaians are a lot more conservative than Nigerians. But yeah. I think you kind of get where I'm going with this, that could you, you know, move this train along and really take that narrative outside of Nigeria? Like a travel and tourism? Show, yeah, and show the sort of whether they have dirty Decembers or, you know, show the kind of positivity in other African countries. 
I mean, a hundred percent, definitely. But my love for Nigeria. I know. We're not. I'm with you. I have like, I won't be, loyalty to motherland. Hmm, but if I was in Nigeria now, I wouldn't. <laughs> so I don't know whether I'd be the right person to take this like on a African tour mm. because my I would always be comparing it to ah in Lagos. If if it's in Lagos exactly now, my point. if yeah. I was doing this in Lagos, like I just don't know if I'll be able to. But I think it's an absolutely fantastic idea. I think mm. the more countries pick up on this the more um, countries in the African continent mm -hmm. do decide to showcase the best of their best, I think that's going to change the absolute narrative. Like, there's so much. We don't, even, we don't even know how important it is to tell our own stories. We Absolutely. don't. I feel mm -hmm. like in general, we're lacking behind in that sense. So the more we do it, mm. irrespective of who you are, because I can't go home now and film a documentary about a December in Britain. There is none. There number is one. A number two. <laughs> I don't count myself as British, despite my accent, and I don't <laughs> want to tell that story. But I'm sure all you people there would love to tell their own story, how yeah. they get it down, how they boogie. So mm -hmm. good for you guys. However, if we all do, if we all do it, have a collective thing, you're onto you're onto a winner there. Honestly, I'm two for two right now. Right? We're for the win. <laughs> we have to talk up. So. Like I already can't wait to watch this documentary. Yeah, uh, like just. Sick. Hearing what you're saying and how you sort of like all have everything planned out and how you're so passionate about just telling a positive uh, story about Nigeria and just using destiny because Nigerians can party. Ooh. Our events are just extra, extra vegan, vivacious, and it's just it. Like the average Nigerian wants to have a wedding, they wait for December. Oh, because we didn't talk about Owambe. So oh, I, 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 I thought that was where Santi was going because I was going to ask you that. We've talked about all the clubs, the events. Uh, oh, have you signed Billy? We've signed it. We've covered, <laughs> literally, we've covered everything. We have a guy whose name is Eniola John. He does like events. Mm -hmm. And we spoke to him, and he's getting us into a wedding. We don't know anyone that's getting married in December, but he does do weddings. Mm -hmm. So he's getting us into a wedding so we can showcase the geles, the outfits, the breaking cola nuts, mm -hmm. the. Every single thing. I think what the what the people want to see is just the color, the vibrancy, mm. the luxury. Because yeah. Nigerian weddings, we can get, even if you loud. want a small one, <laughs> even if you're on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Making a loud budget. My sister, she got married in 2017 mm -hmm. in the UK, but she did like the, the typical Nigerian wedding. Mm -hmm. She had two days across two weeks. She had 3,000 people come to her wedding. 3,000. She doesn't even know 3,000 people. Yeah. You don't need to. It's yeah, just answer. invite your mom and, and then your mom, you, your mom calls her friends, and then her friends call her. Oh, you should come to this wedding. And then uh, she calls a sister and a they brother. And then, so it's. <laughs> Just welcome. So yeah, the plan is to literally show everything, the best of the best, the tourism side, the party side, the Oambe side, mm -hmm. um, the beach house side, the things for recluse, like people that don't like to party, what they can do there, the fun fair side, the just Food. We've got it covered. Food. Uh, food we spoke to Opeyami, who was discussing the best places to eat. Yeah. Listen, there's nothing we haven't covered. It's I been a long it. run, wow. but yeah, we're... Yeah, I'd, I, if you feel like there's anything else, I should add in. I'm mean, here till January, but yeah. no. Wait, so you caught it. <laughs> like, I think, I think you pretty much covered this everything. Right. Like, thing fashion, food, so parties, it. nightlife, all of it. I think she has it pretty much covered. And she has ways too now, so she's completely... Yeah, interview too. Totally. So, yeah, wow. <laughs> I appreciate it, honestly. Wow. Um, I can't wait to I, I think it. that, I mean, if your IJGBs, there's also, like, the beauty experience of getting their braids done. Mm. I'm sure when they come mm -hmm. in, they want to get the their braids done. The IJGB braid with the curls at the yeah, end. Yeah, so they, yeah. they want to do all of that stuff, so probably, you know, want to put part of the beauty all industry through. in there, because that's also a big that's thing a for us. Show. Lagos people like to look good. Yes, yeah. always. It's, it's um, a thing for us. And there's quite a bit in, in that industry as well. But, I mean, I've, I've had such a... We've had such a fantastic conversation. Um, now that we sort of understand what you... The, the door that you've opened up, are there other... Because this is very much your perspective. This is very much the um, UK um, IJGB... I'm wondering if there are other sort of doors open. I know you talked about collaboration with the people who are helping you in the studio and all of that. Um, what other kinds of collaborations do you see now that you've sort of been coming back here for a few years and you're now taking on this project that could potentially open doors to tell other positive stories about Nigeria? Um, I think this one being one, because I remember speaking to the producer here and she was like, you know, she has a story about, um, she wants to work on another story about other sides of like the traditional mm. um, things that happen in Lagos, mm -hmm. um, Nigeria, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, yeah, that works. But I feel like in general, um, there is room to collaborate across the board. So government, they need to speak up a bit more, mm. I think, in, t in terms of every single person I've interviewed has not not said the government in one of the questions that they've asked, even though we tried to stay away from it. Mm. Now we need to go and reach out to the government because it would be biased if mm -hmm. we didn't. Right. Um, I think collaborations between like music and tech and just everything in general, just to make things mesh a bit more infrastructure wise, we can collaborate on that in terms of, you know, making sure that we have certain things in place. The new airport that, you know, we've gotten dished mm. out and stuff. Mm -hmm. We need to do more. We need to make more of a hoopla. We need to shout more about it because yeah. we, des we deserve to shout more about it. And I don't want to hear things about, oh, you know, maintenance, maintenance. If we collaborate well with other, you know, mm. bodies, mm -hmm. we wouldn't even have to complain about, oh, but can we maintain it? Mm. Yes, we can. But collaboration is key. So let's let's weave a thread of positivity, um, and, and that's really really good. Yeah. I, I think the government in Lagos State is, is is should be commended. I think I agree. in terms I agree. of what they're doing for entertainment and that, and that's your world. So yeah, that is my world, and uh, yeah, there's a there's a reason everybody wants to run to Lagos because Lagos is like um, one of the major states that are just working so hard to meet up with the re requirements in the global village of what an ideal developed uh, society should be, you know. So yes, Lagos State Government is doing a great job. I like Lagos. I hate the traffic, but I love Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> so Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that we've, um, your IJGBs who are coming home, what kinds of things have they shared with you in terms of, I mean, of course, they've, worked, they've lived lives vicariously through your experiences mm -hmm. so far. Um, are there any things in particular that have stood out for them that they can't wait to experience? Are they looking or for wives? See? Or husbands? <laughs> no, <laughs> or, yeah, that, that, that's, 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 I look into this that. camera. Listen, <laughs> ladies that are coming from the UK, America, don't come here and be like, oh, I'm going to find myself an African king. Rubbish. Please hold your money so that you can ball out and be a boss woman by yourself it's not that deep you don't have to come here and look for a man to listen that's not have you read the, the book all oh, Lagos men are <laughs> no, no, mad. Oh, Lagos <laughs> men. please yeah. just, just it's not that vibe like if you're looking for a good time um, minus like relationships and stuff Mm -hmm. Just get ready. I've literally prepped them. Get ready. Get your money up because mm -hmm. we're not going to rely on men to pay for us when that's not what we're here for. Get your money up. <laughs> Look, they're looking forward to um, the beach houses the most, mm -hmm. the whole jet mm -hmm. ski thing. Mm -hmm. And they're nice. looking forward to, we found out that you can snorkel here, snorkel here underwater. They're Where? looking forward to that. Snorkel, that. Yeah, there's a whole snorkel thing that they can do from Landmark Beach onwards and stuff. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. Landmark Beach. I'll double check. Oh, wow. but, really? Yeah. So, so be yeah, 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 Soul Beach. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, there's like so many different aspects that they're mm. looking forward to. That if you was to go to like the Maldives or whatever, you're paying an arm and leg, but you're coming to Lagos, it's cheaper. They're looking forward to lashes, lashes here, so much more affordable. Yeah, they like use the human hair, it's wonderful. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I bleached my teeth before I came here. Like, literally, they're looking forward to wow. all the little aspects that I'm showing yeah. them, like all the beach, the ivy drips, all the like nice stuff. That's for the ladies anyway. Mm -hmm. The my cousins that are males that are coming over. They're looking forward to just like being ballers. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> the current house is so much right? <laughs> no, Although Lagos is expensive, but they yeah. will still they'll mm. still feel like the what they're trying to achieve. So mm. um, yeah, but I think just in general, just the going through the motion of not sleeping. Um, partying as much as possible, just having a nice break. It's hot in London. My mom is crying about how cold it, it is. It's like, so cold. Freezing. English just, weather. Yeah, it's just terrible. Whereas you're <laughs> having a December, their, some of them, it'll be their first warm December. December. Warm. Like, it's going to be insane. Like, Christmas Day, we're going to spend it at Obi's house. We're going to do, like, a little bit on the beach beforehand. I don't think anyone's ever had a beach Christmas Day in my family. So, wow. nice. Yeah, I'm Special. looking forward You're to You're literally it. changing lives. Yes. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> you know, I can't say this enough, but it's been so refreshing having you on the show. Um, Thank you. The amount of positivity, I, I, I look for it all the time. I mean, I see it everywhere I look, but I know that my perspective is unique to me. Mm -hmm. um, so when I find other people who are shining the right kind of light, um, and I love the passion with which you said, I'm not doing the negative. And, and please let that run through when you're editing. Um, but I can't personally wait. I can't wait. I will. I will literally bug you. I will follow you until that documentary <laughs> is out, um, because we need to tell those stories. But we've loved having you on the show, um, and we wish you the very best with you know 
your day to December. Yeah. And, um, you know, keeping your, your guests, your cousins, your family, you know, safe and everybody having fun. So, like, I just love the positivity. I know. Out I know. But, like, I, it's I, contagious. I'm, I'm it. You know, it's like I'm seeing my immediate environment fresh yeah. from her eyes. I'm like, it she's is, doing all those things. I've been in this awesome. town. I can't wait to. <laughs> I can't wait to loud it <laughs> when we bring it out. Let's do but, it. Yeah, no, thank you so much for, for doing that for us. Um, before we go, do ensure you listen to our podcast on Spotify and follow us on Instagram at We Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. You cannot leave Africa, Africa said. It is always with you, there inside your head. Our rivers run in currents in the swell of your thumbprints, our drum beats counting out your pulse, and our coastline the silhouette of your soul. Um, and that was by Bridget Dawes. So we'll see you tomorrow at 8pm as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye.